Hi, this is Gloria, Life Coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today, I have an amazing special guest. She's a coach, physician, speaker, visionary, thought leader, CEO Health Team Network, Dr. Pat Ballone. Welcome to the episode of Life's a Shuffle. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Likewise. So for audience members that don't know who you are, kind of give us an intro or tell us a quick story, who you are and where you are today. Well, I've always been interested in medicine. I always played the doctor, not the nurse, not the patient, and I never died <laughs> when I was a kid <laughs> and playing those games. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always the doctor and I was always out to help, you know, as many people as possible, my dogs, cats, all those things like that. So, you know, one of the biggest lessons I learned as a kid was always to remember where you came from and how, and how to get back there. So when I was about four years old. Um, I took off with, uh, the guy across the street. Um, his name was Mikey. And, um, my, asked my mother if she would take us to the playground because we never saw a playground like that. It actually, you know, it had monkey bars, my playground where we grew up at the park had nothing, <laughs> it had trees <laughs> with it swings on it and you played baseball. So we were trying to go over there and she said, um, that she would take us, but the day wore on and the, after the third time, um, I asked her, uh, she's, you know, said, you know, in a little while. So I went across the street and told Mikey, my mom said that we could go and uh, off we went. So we knew that we had to go down two streets and we knew we had to go down so many streets and cross a bigger street. And we did that when we got to the bigger street and we ran across the street because it was a blinking light, not a red light. Um, and we thought it was so busy at that time. Um, it's now like a seven lane highway, six lane highway and um, with the turn lane, um, I lost my shoe. And the nicest gentleman picked my shoe up. He went out in the street, picked my shoe up, and he threw it across the street for me. And we thanked him, waved, <laughs> and we continued. We went to the playground and we played. And then on the way back, we made a mistake. And our mistake was we turned down the wrong street. And it was because we never, ever turned around to see where we were coming from. Metaphorically, that's pretty big anyway. But on the, after we made our wrong turn, we ran into a cop. And the cop that we ran into said he was a police officer, get in the car. He asked us who we were. And, you know, Mikey said, oh, we're lost. And um, he said, but get in the car. And I said, I'm not getting in your car. And he said, why is that? And I said, because I, I told him, I said, my father told me that people dress up as other people and then they steal children. How do I know you're a cop? And he goes, well, I'm dressed like a cop and I'm in a cop car. I said, doesn't mean you're a cop. <laughs> you could have dressed up. You could have stole the clothes and you could have got in the car, <laughs> you know, and, and taken the car. And I said, and now you're trying to steal us. If you're so smart and you know where Commonwealth is at, why don't you just tell us how to get there? And um, then they handled the squall just like way back like in like 1959 or something where they didn't have the technology they obviously have today and they kind of fixed the squelch and I heard my mother's clear voice say get in the car right now <laughs> and so which we did and he took us we were only two blocks away from where we were exposed to where our home was at so we went off in another direction and but my father asked me why I ran away and I said I didn't run away I was just going to the, I was just going to the playground and, um, but my mother told him that I ran away. And so and he asked me why, you know, why we did that. And I said, well, because we wanted to go play in the playground, <laughs> you know, it was that simple. And, um, he just said to me, you know, he said, you can't do that. You cannot leave the street and let, let somebody know where to go. So what I've always learned from that is that when I have treated patients, you know, I have always followed up with them and, you know, and I've always, you know, let them know that, you know, where I'm at is a safe harbor for them to come to and they can ask me anything. And I always just tell people it's my ego, it's my place, but it's your house, you know, make yourself comfortable. There's nothing that you can say that will more than likely shock me. And, um, and so I, I learned to like, you know, like let people know, like that's, you know, if they look over their shoulder, you know, I've got your back. And, um, and also to 
um, you know, ask the, you know, when you ask the right questions, you get the right answers. And so, and then help people in that same way, because it's so easy to get lost. Because there's so many things out there that can distract you and pull you one way or pull the other way. You know, so it was, um, it was a good learning lesson as a kid, for sure. I always look where you came from. You know, <laughs> like, what color was that house anyway, <laughs> you know, on that corner of that street? So that's, and I have other stories. I've got tons of stories that um, have happened to me growing up and, um, and, and learning, you know, um, to make, you know, better choices and to like examine everything in front of me before I, ch- you know, choose the pathway. Yeah. So has your pathway been about challenging questions or helping people? Well, my pathway, you know, um, when I went to, uh, when I was going to go to school and I told my father that I was going to go to chiropractic school, his father, my, he's, my father said, chiropractors are quacks. And my father had like a pretty high degree from Detroit Institute of Technology as an electrical engineer, master, as a master's in electrical engineering. And so I said, I don't, can't believe you just said that, you know, and um, so at any rate, my pathway getting there um, was, you know, my whole life changed in a nanosecond when I arrived on campus. Um, I it was just so eye opening how positive people were, and you know, there is always a solution. I had some really great mentors and some great teachers when I was in school that really helped me, um, like you know, focus, especially like where you know, stepping towards the nutritional portion of what I do. Um, I had a doctor, his name was Dr. Chapel, and his nutrition course, you know, he was saying things about uh, like uh, butter and how good butter was for you, like back in like the late 80s. And everyone was saying, eat margarine, you know, and, you know, and the type of chemical bond that's in margarine is actually carcinogenic. So, you would never ever want to put, you know, margarine in your body. And, and so there's other things that like he went and it really spiked my interest about nutrition and using food as medicine. So it was, you know, that pathway. And then I always, I, what I love to do is I love to share my knowledge with people because I feel that, you know, at like, you know, what's the takeaway from listening to me? It's just like, tell me three takeaways that you have. And so people always used to say to me when I gave talks in my office, like, I didn't know food was that bad for you. <laughs> you know. And we're talking about food that, you know, people would normally buy because organic at that time that I was giving those lectures was an oddity. It was a major oddity. People didn't know how to spell it. And, you know, they said they didn't know about how much water to drink and why it was so important to drink water. And they didn't know that sleep was so important. And they didn't know that chiropractic care was important to get rid of inflammation in the joints and create, you know, better mechanical stability. You know, and and so, you know, those were things that, you know, carried on and carried over. And then when I uh, started my practice, um, you know, I had, um, all of a sudden I had these weird allergies that came up and I saw one of my, a person that became one of my big mentors in chiropractic. And I literally did not have any sensitivity to, it was the thing I had the most sensitivity was like smoke or, and I used to like beer and could have a beer every once in a while, but I would get immediately congested. I didn't feel good when I had it. And I literally had those two things go away in a nanosecond when he worked on me and adjusted me. And I went, wow, I want to learn that. I can help so many people have better lives just by changing some of the food that you eat, have structural stability, help people get the most out of their life so that they can go out and do whatever they want to do with it. You know, that that to me is like a real special thing in that pathway to get to where I'm at like today and having evolved because I do much more um, I'm in the process of, I'm going to have a beta uh, class in January called Stronger Than Medicine, and I'm looking for participants in it. It's a beta group, so the, um, the, obviously the price will be much less than my, uh, the normal price. Um, but it helps people have, you know, we, we're all exhausted. 
You know, a lot of people, especially with COVID going on, you know, people have, you know, their immune system issues, they're exhausted, they're stressed, they perpetually have stuff that's coming at them all the time. And if you don't have a way to simulate that, and if you're not eating really clean, and you're not having really good thoughts, then you're setting yourself up for big problems. I 100% agree with that. Because I would never forget this when this COVID happened um, back in February, when it was kind of going, stuff was going haywire. I remember um, watching, <clears throat> actually, I had a client of mine says, Hey, look, Ron, you know, Costco's out of water, tissue paper, and paper towels. Like, oh, what's going on here? Right. You know, then a day later, here comes the news, here comes social media, here comes all this ad you all at once. So I got scared. Sunday morning, I'm waiting in line at Target to load my cars up because I'm thinking that. Shit's going to hit the fan. The world's going to go down. Everything's going to crash, right? And you know what? That was a Sunday. I have two cards. I'm, I'm, I'm going through there, getting all the noodles, all the hand sanitizer, whatever I can get my hands on, okay? Within 24 hours later, I said to myself, wait a minute here. This is crazy. Something else is controlling me, and I just don't like it. And at that point, I stopped watching the news. If I'm, gonna, if I'm going to learn anything, I'm going to research all the content all the context and facts before I, before I just, just jump pure on on emotion. And that right then there is how people are, have all this pent up, uh, uh, stress, overwhelm, um, anxiety, uh, you know, suicide rates going up. People don't know how, what to do. It's just, you're overwhelmed with all this and listening to you. It's really great to hear that people, um, unlike myself or Gloria, but also people are actually getting out there and realize, wait a minute here. Yes, COVID is important. Yes, we got to be safe, but we got to also heal ourselves too. Because if we do get sick, our immune system is so shot from being overwhelmed, exhausted, it can't heal itself on its own. And hearing you, Dr. Pack, talk, talk about that, that's like wonderful. It resonates really high with me because we need that. I mean, we all need some kind of self care mm-hmm. to actually take care of ourselves. Well, you know, the best thing I saw, like it said, how to get rid of COVID was somebody throwing a TV set out the second story window. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, 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 it's really quite true because, you know, it's just like the, you know, we know how poor the media has the ability to really give you actual facts mm-hmm. because, Many of their facts are swayed by their own personal opinions or the opinions of the um, the broadcasting company. And broadcasting companies, we all know, get a lot of their funding from foundations. And there's many foundations who fund a lot of media that um, have their own agendas in front of them. And that don't have, and people don't know this. People, <laughs> they're going like, well, CNN said this, you know. And, you know, when the one time I watched CNN in the last four months, I thought everybody who was on there looked like they were robots. <laughs> and they had no emotion. And they were, and it isn't like they were reporting facts, even in monotone, but they had this kind of a strange, you know, kind of it was just one of those feelings when I looked at it and going like wow you know and I said you, you know and I was staying I was at an Airbnb at the time and um I this woman who was there was really um nervous about everything she was watching it like four hours a day and I said that's going to make you sick you know and then, you know, there's other things about COVID that drove me crazy, you know, about, you know, mask wearing, you know, I want to wear my zero mask from when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> <to the market. laughs> you know, the, the thing about you know, the mask, they're cloth and, the, and viruses, you know, isn't like it goes in one way and doesn't come out the other way. It's like being in the hospital and you're on a, a ward and there's this red line. And the sterile wards on one side of that red line and the non-sterile wards on the other side. So then you see doctors and little like like paper slippers and stuff like that and mask on walking back and forth. Like how does the virus virus or with germ or microbe know it's only supposed to stay on that side as soon as it gets to the red line? Can't leave. You know, it doesn't happen that way. The germs are everywhere. And if we didn't have them, we wouldn't necessarily be healthy. So and you know, in the light of like the thing that drives me crazy about the mask is because masks 
uh, you got to put them on your face with your hands. And one of the primary ways that COVID, they say, is transferred to, is by hands to face. So you have people come to Costco, they buy their gas, they <laughs> come out from Costco or they go in to go buy their groceries, you know, or buy whatever that they buy. They got to put the mask on. So they got to touch their face when they're in there. They're touching everything. No one ever makes them to go near a Wegmans or Kroger's or Stop and Shop or whatever the grocery stores. They don't say you've got to wash your hands before you go in and then wash your hands on the way going out. But you have a multitudinous amount of people coming into those places, you know, and, you know, with their hands touching everything and then leaving, you know? So I always thought this is personal opinion, by the way, mm -hmm. um, if it's so contagious, then why aren't people, why isn't it mandated that you have to wash your hands before entering a place where there's, gr where groups of people go shop? You know, it's just like, I don't get that. And, you know, and wash your hands on the way going out, you know, because then you get back in your car. Well, the um, one place that I was at, this person was using Clorox, you know, kind of like um, 409, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, which, to me, though, that's a toxic element in your environment and spraying the outsides of the foods that they were buying. Oh, went, wow. That's oh, wow. Worse, that's worse for you than <laughs> than the COVID. I mean, you, it's just like that there's, to me, it's like, it's a kind of craziness. It's like, you know, making people obsessive about things that, you know, do, you know, like, you know, like you have to wash your food anyway, right. You mm -hmm. wash your, like, your fruits and vegetables. And when you get home, when you go to use them, you know, it just, I just think there's so many incongruent things about well, what's been said, you know, from, you know, the CDC to the NIH to who mm -hmm. um, and other organizations that, you know, like there's there's a lot of misinformation out, which makes keeps people in a state of confusion. And we all know that confused buyers don't buy. It That's keeps it, them in their life. Yeah, yeah it's interesting that you you mentioned that because um, now that we're on the subject, uh, I was at a store recently and I did see someone in line as the other person was done paying, then the next person goes. So this person has, you know, gloves and has that, um, that visor, the clear visor that goes over your face and a mask. And he sprayed something in the air before he walks into, he goes into the area where the person before him was. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, oh, what's he doing? But he's spraying something in the air. I figured, oh, he's sanitizing the area. And he's sanitizing that whole area where the other person was before him. So I was just kind of, you know, for a minute, like, the, for me, it was like, this is very interesting, you know, the, all the things that's happening and what's going on in people's mind. So on that note, what do you believe, you know, uh, nowadays, what's going on with the mindset and mental health these, these days? Well, mental health comes from the gut. And so when people have mental health issues like depression and anxiety, it goes, you know, we kind of like we meaning um, medicine that studies that knows that those issues are not in your head. They come from your gut. And so the when you're looking at that, you know, mental health and wellness, it's like there's a, a lot of people get when they get frozen or when they freeze, or when they're not thinking straight because common sense eludes them, then, you know, it's just like, you've got to go, you know, it's just like, and, and that happens a lot in health anyway, because people, you know, when people tell me what they eat, I'm like, really? I don't think they make that stuff anymore. You know, <laughs> it's just like, certainly don't make that in Europe. You know, when you're looking at um, the, the duality of what goes into a product in the United States versus like the UK, for instance, and just a good example, easy example is ketchup. Um, so the, you know, I think when people, you know, there's a lot of people who don't have mental health problems before this and now do, they're anxious or they're not sleeping. You know, there's three reasons why people get sick. It's simple. It's not brain surgery. And the first one is trauma and trauma causes inflammation. The first trauma that happens to people is when they're born. So when they go through that birthing process, nine out of 10 people have some type of injury in the neck. That's why you take your kids and that's why you get adjusted from a chiropractor is to check that alignment 
and make sure that that's proper um, so that you at least have a fighting chance from that moment on going forward. But, you know, you have bumps, falls, accidents, falls down steps, you know, car accidents, whatever, that changes how their body configures and creates a new normal. I don't ever want to create a new normal. You know, I want to be as healthy and vibrant and mobile as, you know, as I can be, like live longer, better, healthier, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So when, you know, when we have these things that are, you know, that are traumas and those inflammations get to stay there, then you start seeing things with arthritis. You start hearing people now in their 30s say they have arthritis. Like, come on. That is like, that's not right. Then you have things that are toxins. That's the second reason why people get sick. So the second, and so those toxins are from the food that you eat, the water you drink, the air that you breathe, and the cleaning products that you have in your house. And you have to even look and perhaps take it one step farther. Like if you buy a new couch, most furniture material is treated with some type of chemical. And what happens is, is that when you digest and inhale those chemicals, then they go into your body and they get absorbed into your bloodstream and they have to go to your liver. So your liver has to take those, take those things out. That's what the job is, one of the jobs of the liver. And so when it takes that out, technically it should put it into your um, back into your intestinal tract, or it should put it through like to the kidneys in the bladder so that you end up peeing it out. So if it doesn't do that and it gets overwhelmed, it starts to store those things in blood, brain, bone, and fat. And when that happens, that's deep. You know, so if you have a weak link in your health, then it's going to go to that weak link first. And then it will go when that link gets full and then it's going to go to the other. So when you start seeing things, when you hear from people who say like, Oh, and where it usually goes to the fatty tissue first. So fatty tissue in the body is like the omentum around the organs. It is, you know, the ovaries. It's all the sexual organs, testicles. It is, um, you know, breast and also, you know, your brain. So if those and like heavy and heavy metals is a big issue in the United States. So heavy metals goes, if you eat them, they get absorbed very quickly. And so, you know, things that people take for supplements that take them out of their system because they're in solution, never make it outside the gut. There's only one product that I know that goes outside the gut and actually is able to go into a cell and extract those um, chemicals out of it. And so, you know, if you, you've got to take a look at like that aspect of why that makes you sick. So if you can figure out how to fix that part of it by eating organic, having good water, you know, and having an air purifier um, that you could have in your house that's more helpful, you know, and then, you know, you can change your cleaning products. I mean, that's, that's simple. That's not a hard, you know, thing. Read labels and learning how to read labels and like, if I can't pronounce it, don't buy it. And if you can't look it up and it doesn't have what the side effects or if there's any contraindications, you know, and you're thinking, oh, gee, you know, like when people take Lipitor, one of the biggest things in so Lipitor, for instance, as a pharmaceutical drug or its derivatives, is that you have memory loss. I'm not interested in losing my mind for anybody. You know, that that's that's for me. Mm-hmm. I, and that's a big thing, you know. And then the third thing that is the biggest, 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 biggest thing, which is where all this COVID comes back to. And the reason why I went through the thick teeth is thoughts. So many people can no longer get a hold on their thoughts or be able to be reasonable to figure out if something's the truth or not the truth, because everything that has been fed to them, they're saying it's a lie. It's, it's, or it's, that's not the truth. You've got to go inspect it. You have to, you know, like there's some things I've uh, posted on like Facebook where someone said, well, that's not a hundred percent true. I said, 80% of it is. And I said, (laughs) and do your research, you know, Mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, and if it doesn't fit for you, don't read it. I mean, just like, yeah, move on, you know, but the thought thing is a huge thing, especially for women. And so women have a tendency to worry about everybody. They get into a relationship with somebody, they get married to somebody. So, you know, guys buy some coconut butter. (laughs) <laughs> you know, massage the coconut butter into the sh- behind the shoulders and the feet. And the reason for that is, is because it increases the good feeling hormones for women. 
Men can use it too, by the way. But the but the point of that is it's just like women overthink things and then you ruminate, then you can't sleep at night. Mm-hmm. You know, or you're eating really poor foods, you know, that are not digesting very well because you're not really they're not chemically combined together. And meaning not chemically because there's chemicals in them, but foods that are, you know, a good um, pairing when you you use the word now, when you're going to a fine restaurant to say, oh, it's paired with this, (laughs) you know, Um, and, and, and the amounts of it. So, you know, those things can matter as far as protein, fats, and carbohydrates go to get you into that diet that's really anti inflammatory. Because mm-hmm. that's where your health comes back. That's where you get that better pH for in, in the blood, in the tissues, and also um, in every day. But the thoughts part of it, can I, the unfortunate thing about thoughts is that if you can't get it handled and can't get a handle on it, it undoes anything good that you do for, you know, the trauma, for the inflammation, and also for the, you know, the toxicity, which also causes inflammation. The main thing. Just so I can just say this in 2004 on Time Magazine on the cover, they had this picture that said inflammation, the surprising, um, how to say the surprising um, link between major, you know, chronic diseases. I don't remember exactly how it was phrased and inflammation. They all had one thing in common. It was inflammation, you know, cancer, diabetes, prediabetes. A lot of people don't even know they're sick. They have prediabetes. They have no clue, you know, um, and or they don't know that they have something brewing below the surface, which we've seen, and how some people have expressed their health after they have had the exposure to COVID. And then they had these cytokine storms that their immune systems just shut down. Wow. So that's that's your three T's. That's my, those are my three T's. Yes, that I've they, read about, yeah. Trauma, toxicity, and thoughts. Thoughts, yeah. And then going back to like um, when you said about people that are sick and they don't know it, how do they know that they have something going on? Oh, this is, um, I was telling Ron about that I wanted to ask you. This is the um, the Grim Reaper syndrome. <laughs> that you- well, I love the idea of Grim Reaper syndrome because it's like a lot of times people keep on doing things, right? And they do them. I always think of the funny story. And then I'll tell you how you know how to find your weakest link. Um, a little girl goes at uh, th- uh, Easter and says to her mother, who's making ham, and said, Mommy, how come you're cutting off the end of the ham? And she said, well, you know, your grandma always did it. That's the way that we do it in this family. And she's going, oh, but how come you cut it off, though? And does it make it taste better? And she said, yeah. And she said, you're going to have to ask her grandma when she comes here. So as soon as her grandmother comes in the door, she goes running up to her grandmother and she says, Grandma, can you tell me why? Why is it that you cut the end of the ham off? And she said, well, it didn't fit in the pan. (laughs) 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 So, So it's just like we do things out of habit. And I tell people, if you don't want to have the problems, genetically speaking, that your family's had, then you can change your constitution by changing your thoughts, you know, the things that you put in your mouth, the air that you breathe, the water you drink, the cleaning products that you use. And you can change it by, you know, making sure that you're biomechanically sound. You know, it's a, it's a simple thing. So how people know they have, there's 11 organ systems and those organ systems in the body work in, they're very congruent with each other. So if you have, you know, a problem in one of them or sluggish, and then you're going to see something else go on someplace else. Like for instance, the gut, if the gut's off, then your liver is going to be, have a problem with detoxification because you're having, um, when you're absorbing uh, nutrients, those nutrients, if they're too big for the body, create a, like a allergic type of reaction. And then it has to go to the liver and the liver is trying to synthesize it. And when the liver gets overwhelmed, like I just said a couple of minutes ago, it goes into blood, brain, bone, and fat. So when all those things are working together, it's all hunky-dory. So when you're not, and it's the reason why I wrote my book called Why Are You Sick, Fat, and Tired? You know if you're tired. And you know, basically, if you're fat, you can take a look in the mirror, you can do a test for um, body composition, which will tell you your internal fat. And that's really important because we all know somebody who had that clean bill of health and two days later died of a heart attack. 
Mm -hmm. because there are normals on that were on those tests. They said that was normal. They passed. For me, when I look at blood work, I look at highs out of the range of normal and lows out of the range of normal. And I look at high normals and I look at low normals and I can map out for somebody exactly where their weakness is from that information. Also in my book, why are you sick, fat and tired? You know, the fat part, but people don't know if they're sick. That's the grim reaper part. And so if you, in the book, it is a roadmap that takes you and looks at each one of your organ systems. I've had people tell me, my doctors never asked me those questions, Dr. Pat. I said, well, now you have. And mm -hmm. so when you, mm -hmm. answer those, when you answer those in present time, you can see that your health snapshot today and how that, that, how that figures out. So you can say, I've had people who've had a lot of, because there's low, medium, high priorities. So I've had people who've had a lot of high priorities. Then the question becomes, okay, if this is the case, then where do I start my health journey? Where, where is it that I need today to spend time and energy and my good money on so I can focus on how to have the best life ever now, not have to wait for it? And or the ability to, you know, prevent or diffuse things that are genetically speaking, supposedly family induced, because many of the health like lifestyle type things are all, you know, lifestyle induced, all the chronic illnesses and diseases. There's always a basis when you go back and look at what where somebody comes from. And the such. So if you don't want whatever your parents had or your grandparents had, you definitely have to take control of your life and you have to be able to go in and make sense of what's going on with you so that you can find a better way that's simpler and you get tangible results. So it gets you unstuck. Yeah. So you try and tell me right now, I can change my health through my environment food I eat, what I put in my body and mental health. So yes. how come doctors are always mm -hmm. saying, Hey, I, I go to doctor. Hey doc, you know, I'm not feeling well. Here's a pill. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm having some, uh, some self doubt. Oh, here's a pill. Why, why are we on this pill drug? Then at the environment around us, it's, it's, we can control it. Well, big pharma has got a lot of control and they have their tendrils in a lot of different places. And so most doctors, when they're given a um, education about pharmaceutical drugs, it's from a flyer that a pharmaceutical rep gave them. That's mm -hmm. my understanding. So when they go to give something out, they say, hey, we have this new drug that does X, Y, and Z. I mean, we've all seen those commercials on TV that when you, they're listening at the very end, the guy's talking, you know, he's talking nice and slow. And then all of a sudden at the very end, Hey, uh, like when they're telling you all the bad stuff, they're talking like 5,000 miles and you can't understand it. It sounds like one big, huge word. So you ignore it. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I said to myself, you say all that stuff. Why would I take that product? It can cause heart attack, high blood pressure, kidney <laughs> failure, liver failure. I, I don't <laughs> want those. <laughs> I mean, also the National Institute of Health and one of their good notes about lifestyle medicine, you know, by definition looks at diet first, exercise, targeted supplementation. And then you look at, if that doesn't work, then you look at doing pharmaceutical drugs um, of some sort initially, but the idea isn't to be on them forever. And if you can change where your, you know, how your body is functioning, you know, by nurturing it, because food can be medicine, you know, then you have a much better chance at having, you know, less problems less visits to the doctor, you know, and, and it's just like and paying attention to those little things like everyone has, you know, at some point in time, floaters in their eye. And so, you know, in Chinese medicine, clear ones relate to quote unquote, the, ah, the liver, excuse me. And the dark ones relate to the kidney. So if I went to a kidney, to an acupuncturist and I'm an acupuncture physician also, um, and someone told me that I would definitely look at, you know, and ask some specific questions relating to like kidney function. I would look at things, you know, that the, for the meridian for the kidney, and I would definitely think about tonifying, which makes help with the, you know, doing needles and also doing herbs, because that's the best way to get the best part out of oriental medicine is do the herbs with acupuncture. You know, there's times that you might only do one or the other, but you would more than likely want to do both. But yes, 
And also the problem, you know, when I read about 10 years ago, I read a statistic that said that um, by the age of 50, the average person is taking five pharmaceutical meds. So I was asked one time, why do I think that is? I said, well, you take one and then you go back to your doctor for your check-in like three weeks later, three months later, you know, or you make a phone call and they say like, how's it going? You're going, yeah, I think it's going okay. So they're relying on your ability to diagnose yourself, you know, because there might've been subtle differences that happen, but they don't know it. So they go, but I am having symptoms with X, Y, and Z. Oh, I can give you something for that. So they give you the second drug, you know, and then you start having symptoms from that. And they give you another drug for that. They never go like, well, why are you having problems in the first place? Why are we not going to the root of the problem fixing that? You know, that... That part of that drives me crazy. You know what drove me crazy <clears throat> is this. So my dad started having really issues with high blood pressure, stress, and you know, he's an entrepreneur. You know, he grew up really poor. So his idea is work, 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 and work yourself to death. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's fine, you know, because he wants to have something for myself, my sister, and his family. I would, oh, He died five years ago, and I would always believe my heart if he would done a couple of different things. Get rid of people in his life that started bringing him down. So, like my stepmom, she was bringing him down. She was just there for golden parachute. Uh, if you got, if you would have found a way to talk to a therapist or a psychologist, someone to relieve the mental stress, because he had a lot of pent up problems, anger, and that would cause the strokes to come on. Most important one to me is this. So, my dad had strokes. So, obviously, the first thing you do is get some, high, some medication, right, to, for his blood pressure. Six months later, oh, no, doc, you know, I, I can't, I'm getting constipated. Oh, you are? Okay, no problem. Here's a pill for that. About a year later, hey, doc, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't know, you know, I, I just, and I sing, oh, here's a pill for that. I, after all those pills, come to find out the one pill was interacting with something else, they give you a pill for that. When that pill starts interacting with that, and they give you a pill for this, he pretty much became hooked. So pretty much all the doc is doing is getting medication. Over a period of time, this is really what happened. My dad got so tired of taking medication, he refused to take his medication. Then next, you know, his problems get exacerbated. You know, he starts having high blood pressure again. His mood swings are there. He started getting um, dementia, Alzheimer's, um, preset. Because he died when he was 64, going to 65. So I said to myself, I'm going to do this. Because he got hooked to the medication. I mean, pretty much, he, he couldn't. The way he died was this. One day he had a slip and fall, he hit his head, he got he had um circles around his eyes. And he said, Okay, let's go to the doctor, make sure you're okay, right? Hit your head a little older. And kind of find he had a blood clot in his leg. Doctor says, Hey, stay here. Then next thing he has a blood clot in his lung. Two weeks later, they're talking about removing his small intestine. A week later, they're moving his large intestine. He had no intestine in his body whatsoever. I wonder over all those years from 2007 until 2015 when he died, taking all that medication, would it just die? Does his intestines just die because of that? And, and that's why I want to stay away from medication. I want to find something holistic, natural that my body can actually synthesize and use. That's medication. Well, it's also the, like the uptake because a lot of, you know, the, the thing, too, that I would have cautioned your father on is, and also the pharmacist should have informed him, um, was that he should have, they should have, like, compared, like, what are you taking and what it does. The other thing is, is that there's a, um, a simple test that, you know, in Western medicine that they do, I can't remember the exact name of it right now, but that um medication, that test is to see how well you're clearing the medication that you're taking. So for instance, when my mother was in, uh, before my mother went in the hospice, they gave her some trimadol, which is like synthetic morphine or something like that. And she started hallucinating, but, and then they gave her a competency test, which I kind of like question mark that. But the, the point is, is that when they gave her the first dose, she was okay. When they gave her the second dose, she was kind of woo woo. And then when she gave her the, the third dose, she started hallucinating because she said, your father came and visited me. My father died like 20 years ago. And I said, I go, so did you see a spirit? She goes, no, he was here. <laughs> and so, <laughs> well, what did he, well, what did he say, mom? <laughs> you know, but, you know, and I question um, their dosage, 
And then they went back and they went, oh, yeah, I think we like, you know, we gave her an extra one by accident. And, you know, so she was so she was not feeling she was, you know, like her when her liver was no longer functioning at 100 percent or even 90 percent, because when they they were giving her these drugs, it would just it would be in her blood system. And then they went, OK, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Time for the next one. They didn't like check to see if she was clearing those things properly. So I behoove anybody who has to be on any type of medications to go have that conversation with their, their doctor and say like, okay, I'm not, you know, in order for me to take this, I need to know I'm going to clear it and how well I clear it. And there's, it's like, I don't know. I like, I was saying right now, I can't remember the name of that specific test, but in functional medicine, that's a test that, you know, they recommend for doing for that type of stuff then why aren't doctors doing it? I mean, if it's something well, should be there because we're educated about it or something or, or, or what? Well, my understanding is that, you know, most medications are set for somebody who's 150 pounds. And so when even like for your nutri- nutrients, like your, the, the nutrients that you would take for like an alternative medicine, you know, like there's a lot, if you take uh, blood pressure meds, for instance, like blood pressure meds for on the Western side, you know, certainly get rid of blood pressure if they help with it, but so does natural things like B12, you know, and, um, you know, eating well and, um, you know, there's other like, like lavender or what, whatever it is that you, you know, that you can take um, to help reduce that also, you know, but the thing is, is that what they don't do is they guess they're not testing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so, if they got if they did their tests so they didn't have to guess if they would be it would be much more efficient you know so then the problem is like when people go people don't have anyone to advocate for themselves so when they go to the doctors and even i i know this from when i was actually in practice you know on in a, a mortar brick and mortar building as people would say to me like um you know it's just like well what what should i ask them okay let's my favorite part, let's bring out a pad of paper and write those questions down. And I said, you ask your doctor this question, this question, this question, this question in this order. And he should give you an answer for every one of those because he won't be able to answer the third one unless he answered the second one. You know, and so people would do that. And then I say, like, well, I didn't want to bother him. Excuse me? <laughs> 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 what do you mean? And like, and then these days and times, I mean, it's just the way that the healthcare system is set up. You've got less than fifteen or fifteen minutes is your time slot. You better say everything that you want to say, and like, not talk about like, hey, how's your dog? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, or it's just like, you know, you got to get right into like the thick of things, like instantaneously, in order to you know get those answers that you need to have. And a lot of times, you know, doctors, you know, they, you know, I had a. Um, I had a a, a 15 minute uh, conversation with a orthopedic doctor who I love. He's a great doctor, you know, and my 15 minute conversation with him, you know, excuse me, I'm going to, um, (laughs) anyway, so so I want to make sure the door is closed. Um, so, you know, on that 15 minute consultation, the guy just said, finally says to me, well, you know, show me your hand. So I showed my hand because I had a fall on my hand and he goes, where does it hurt? And he goes, okay. <laughs> and I'm thinking that 15 minute evaluation and conversation with them was street price, $800. Wow. That was, you know, and that's the average price that telemedicine charges so, for that level. Mm-hmm. So you, you, um, I thought about what my friend did recently also is, you know, you've probably heard of a lot of women going through certain situations or changes in their body. And a lot of it, a lot of the women out there don't understand, um, what's happening, what's going on. And my friend, um, made a list of all the symptoms that she believes, or that we actually all believe that we share that we believe we're going through. And so she had a doctor's appointment and she wrote down the list of all those symptoms, shows them to her doctor and doctor says, yep, that's pretty normal. But (laughs) (laughs) yeah, that, that, that's normal. You know, at your age or whatever it is, you're going to go through that. 
the hair in the back of my neck stand up. <laughs> and and so she comes back to us and we said, okay, so what did he say? Because, you know, the symptoms that she wrote down are pretty much similar to what, you know, there's four of us that we're all kind of going through because we're all pretty much the same age. But we believe that what it is, what's happening to us is our body. We know our body is going through these changes and, um, but we kind of want, you know, some kind of answer, right? So for her, she was thinking that there's days that she just can't do it anymore and can't handle it. There's got to be something that we can do about this. So her expectations was, here are some medications that you can take. Maybe you could do this. Maybe this will help balance it out, you know. But when Maybe. she came in there, <laughs> right, exactly. And when she got out of it from her doctor was says, yeah, that's normal. normal. It'll happen. You'll feel all that and you'll get all those. Right. So my experience in over 38 years of practice is that people who have poor diets have more symptoms. And so when you don't, when your diet is pretty clear, you know, um, and like you don't eat sugar, you know, and you really watch your salt intake and you, um, and if you want to fix that problem, you know, it's just like everyone's going to go through that. Is it normal to have menopause? Absolutely. The, is it normal to have severe symptomatology? Even people who had severe PMS, right? It's just like what I experienced. And from when I talk to people about, you know, what to eat, how to eat, you know, things that you can do, you know, it's just like, do I recommend some, you know, supplementation for that? Chinese have a really great remedy for menopause. And, you know, and then they, you know, then depending upon whether it's more of a hot condition or a cold condition, you can add other herbs into that mix in order to soothe that system. But even in Chinese medicine, they're treating the symptom for something like that and not the cause. So like, obviously, you got to treat the root and you got to take care of the immediate symptoms while you're doing it. But my experience is that people who have significant um you know, like significant symptoms during menopause, premenopausal by a fan, um, a hand fan. Um, and, you know, is that you've really got to clean your diet up. Mm. <laughs> you know, you got, it's just like, you've got to go back to your diet. It's just like, it's not, there's not any other way to take a look at that. And you've got to see what, you, what organ system has a weak link. So I would tell you and your friends to make sure that you read my book and you do the book and then make an appointment with me so that I can help you pinpoint because you might have another organ system that's making it more reactive than what it really is. Mm. And Okay, so then that includes hair loss, though. I, I feel like yeah, I know. Yeah, I like, know. God, that's crazy. <laughs> and you're yeah, I, I when, you, when you said sugar, I, I was laughing because you know, yeah, I feel like I've cut down on sugar because I I'm a very big fan of sugar, cupcakes, cakes, you know, chocolate, and all that. Although coffee, I don't do too much sugar on my coffee, but I, I laugh because that's one that. I feel like I, I've always told myself I need to cut down in sugar. I need to cut this out of my diet. But it's just sometimes I feel like it's so hard and there's temptations, you know. And So what's hard about it for you? What's hard about cutting sugar out of your diet? Is it mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, or social? I think for me it's social. Okay, so what makes what makes cutting out sugar social? Like, is it because you like to entertain? And I'm just this is just asking a question um, because I'm going to tell you if you want to be healthy, you shouldn't eat sugar <laughs> at all. If you go to reach for it, like I just made cranberry sauce and um, for Thanksgiving, and I make cranberry sauce. I don't cook it. I make it raw and they have such a simple recipe and it calls for a cup of sugar. I didn't put a cup of sugar in. I put a half a cup of sugar in and it tasted perfectly fine. Mm. So I make the best cranberry sauce relish. People always invite me back just because of that. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, but, but I, and you know, can I use organic sugar, you know, and I use organic you know, anytime I made a conscious decision four years ago 
if that, if there was a choice of buying organic asparagus or non-organic asparagus, you know, I didn't look at the price. I looked at what I was, what my investment was in my health. And so when I go to do that, so I'm going to tell you that, you know, like when we're talking about the social aspect of it, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm curious to find out what the hook is for you. Because when you find out what the hook is, you can take the hook and throw it away. Uh, I, yeah. You'll find that trigger point, right? That trigger, yeah. something's triggering the, I mean, the, the process. I mean, it's just like, you know, if you're going to eat chocolate, there's no problem with you eating chocolate. You should, if you're a woman, you should have a little bit of chocolate every day, but not the whole bar. You know, like a beta, you know, we're talking, you know, like in 85% or more. If you eat something less than that, it doesn't do, it's not healthy for you. The health part, the beneficial part of chocolate comes in at 85% and above. So, you know, and it's also like, you know, when you're looking at how to combine foods, like if you combine foods incorrectly, then you're going to crave sugar things. You know, so it's just like knowing how to piece those pieces of the puzzle together for you, you know, might give you a different perspective about sugar where it's a non-event for you. And that's where you want to be. You don't want sugar. You don't want a piece of food, you know, to dictate how you're going to do your life because then you're addicted to it. So let, let's switch. Wow. That that makes sense. Let me ask a question now. So as I'm getting a little older and. Here comes, you know, old man, you know, you got prostate cancer, potentially uh, ED, erectile dysfunction. All these things are coming up. Is there anything preventable or is this, well, I'm going to get older. This is going to happen. I mean, because these are my concerns now. Well, I mean, you're going to perhaps slow down. But if you go back to the sugar thing that we were just talking about, you know, it, it's a broad spectrum. So like when you have stress and you have cortisol levels go up, then some hormone is going to pay for it later on, whether it's estrogen or testosterone. So I know a story of a woman who, a young woman who was married, and they were married about five or six years, and it seemed all of a sudden her husband was no longer interested in her. So she said, like, what is it? Is it like, am I getting fat? <laughs> you know, like, you know, like mm. what is it? I mean, it's just like, don't you like me anymore? Are you having an affair? And he goes, no, no, no. He goes, everything's fine. He insisted. You ask a guy, you know, do you feel sick? They will tell you, I'm fine. They think sick is throwing up in the toilet. It's just like, they don't pay attention to those other small things. You know, so like when I look at people who have, you know, erectile dysfunction, I'm saying circulatory problems. Anybody, I dated a guy one time that, you know, um, that when I went to go, we were going someplace, I went to go brush my teeth and I went, didn't bring toothpaste. I opened up his, um, his, uh, the, in the bathroom that where you nice it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so at any rate, I, he had four bottles dated two days before that of, um, Viagra. And I just went last date. <laughs> wow. and, cl and close it brush my teeth and you know and I told my mother that she goes you went in a, someone's medicine cabinet I said I think everyone should do that I said it's <laughs> going to give you a plethora of information bring your camera in you can take pictures and you can look up the meds someone's taking and what they're for but when somebody has circulatory problems then you got to go back to the heart you have to go back to circulation you know and you've got to go like why is that happening you know that's like why you know, I ask like, you tell me you've got something, go get your diagnosis. And then my question is like, well, why do you have that? So when you're talking about like erectile dysfunction and you're talking about lack of drive, you know, it isn't like, you know, some people take horny goat seed or whatever it is, you know, it's just like, you've got to take a, you've got to go back to basics when crap hits the fan, no matter where it hits the fan at, no matter what industry, when, no matter what part of your life, you got to go back to basics. And you got to find out where the cracks are and where it's deficient. And you have to fortify that part of your bank. Mm. That's interesting. Right? So yeah, for men, they lose that. But then for, I've heard stories for women, as they get older, they have the drive. They have more drive or less drive? They have more drive. Well, you know, you're having a different type of like hormonal reaction at that time. But it's just like when, and women, you know, it's just like, it's going to vary differently. Like 
for instance, all women, I think, when they go to their doctor should have a when they have their hormonal uh, tests done, they should make sure that they test for all seven estrogens. It's important, very, very important. And if the doctor goes, you don't need it, find a different doctor. It's just like you should have your, your estrogen test should test for all seven because you've got to see what's happening and how those estrogens are relating to each other. Because it's the last two that we create some issues and problems for women who are having more issues or are prone to have breast cancer. And the same for men. If you sit there and like, where do toxins go? This is a test. <laughs> where do toxins go? The three T's, right? Mm -hmm. Toxins yeah. go to blood, brain, bone, and fat. Fatty tissue is the scrotum. It's all the sexual organs. You know, it's the fatty tissue like the brain, you know, the omentum. You know, it's like it goes to blood, brain, bone and fat. So it's just like if, if those are your choices of where something goes that is toxin, it would behoove people to like, hey, you know, maybe I can really detoxify some aspects of my life. Like, how can I make my life, you know, less toxic? Don't eat anything out of styrofoam. If someone tries to give you styrofoam in a restaurant, you know, refuse it. You can get aluminum foil on it. When you get home, you can unpack it and you can put it in a glass container. Don't heat anything up with plastic in the microwave and don't even use the microwave. <laughs> it's like they, you know, it's not, you know, you have to look like what, what's, what's happened with our health over the years and what are things that were induced that were, you know, inventions that were supposed to make it easier, you know, and what it is, you know, I have a dog and my dog is, um, I apply all my lifestyle medicine and um, functional medicine and chiropractic. He gets acupuncture, he gets massage, he has cold laser, he has, a, he gets needles, you know, and the stuff. And his vet said at 15 years and his dog breed only lives usually to be 11 and 12 said, whatever you're doing, you should teach people. Because, you know, that. One thing is, is that whatever, like animals get the same thing we get. So if you can apply like, just like simple things, like when you're, you know, like we, like, you know, for simple food, like if you're going to make a meal that has more than five ingredients, you know, you, you got to know what the ingredients are. You got to know, be able to read labels. You have to know like, what's the ratio between protein, fats, and carbohydrates that make it an anti-inflammatory diet. You know, it's, it's putting a piece of those pieces of the puzzle together. And that's where, you know, I help people get the big picture so that they can DIY or DIY themselves and they can go do it themselves. They don't need me to do that. They can go like, oh, well, this is like, here's, here's, you know, I've got this issue going on. What can I do about it? And you always got to go back to basics. You fix your gut. You can change your life completely yeah, and no in a very short period of time. Yeah, because you know what? When I listen to your podcast, uh, Found Family, and you're talking about gut health, kidney health, and all this stuff, immediately this week when I listened to the podcast on Monday, I stopped taking any kind of pre-workout, any kind of protein shakes, and said, I'm going to start cutting back, and I don't need it. And because I'm saying to myself, wait a minute here, I got I get all these toxins over the years, because usually with protein, protein powders and all this stuff, you should be taking a break, right? You, you, you don't be on the forever. I've been doing it for a very long time. Like, man, I must have a lot of toxins built up in my body. I'm clearly unaware of. So I said to myself, what can I do to detoxify my body? Let's say the liver, right? Filtration. Let's say the kidneys. Okay. So I went on, on your website. I went into your, your social media. I found out what I should take to detoxify it. And I found charcoal pills. I found dandelion. I found milk thistle. Is that it for my gut health or should I be, am I missing a component there? Because I'm thinking about, man, well, you know, my life is on the line here and I want to, I want to go, go back to the root cause, like you said in the podcast and today, where is it at and how can I fix it? Well, I always caution people on DIY and choosing supplementation for it because you don't know, remember that story about the high blood pressure pills, you know, that the Western medicine has that we have alternative medicines that do this mm -hmm. and how some things can work for you for a while. Then they don't suddenly work. And you're going, well, why is that? It's because you don't know what the root problem is. Mm -hmm. So if you're going, if you're interested in doing a short term detoxification, then that's an okay thing to do, but doing it for long term, it might not be. So, you know, on people who are, you know, who are listening to this and if they're interested in that, I have a, a, a thing that I call an NBQ, a metabolic questionnaire 
So what the metabolic questionnaire tells you is it tells you whether or not you're a candidate for detoxification. And then I have a short quiz um, past that that tells me what your gut's doing because you can't detox your liver if your gut's not in good shape. Mm-hmm. Because what happens is it's like it dumps it into the gut and then it recycles it again. And then when the liver gets overwhelmed, and I said this a couple of times already, then what it does is it goes and it, it goes, hides out in blood, brain, bone, and fat. And when it gets the blood, it's deep, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, it's just like when you go to take and, you know, do I ever take milk thistle? I take milk thistle um, as a dietary supplement, but it's the right thing for me to do. So if I, you know, and I love dandelion, I eat dandelions like all year long, you know, when with vinegar and um, like scallions and, you know, a little teeny, teeny pinch of salt. But I don't eat, you know, generally I don't take pick a salt shaker up since I was probably around like 22. (laughs) Um, That's many years ago. Um, so, you know, it's like the, like, and, and you also, there's certain foods that you can eat. I have a 10 day detox program that, um, if somebody's a candidate for that, that pairs specific foods on specific days in a 10 day program, because a lot of people that do detoxification programs and they feel like crap, you know, and they're going, oh, this happens all the time. Well, the thing is that you shouldn't be purging your liver you know, and purging toxins out of your system. What you should be doing is tonify how your organ system is working so they work in conjunction with each other so it functions at a higher level and a better level so that when toxins get there, they're handled appropriately and they're not stored. So the, the things that you're doing are a bad thing to do to add into your diet. And there's things that people, you know, like I always say like if people just like drink more water and put, they could put lemon in it. So they have better absorption of their food and micronutrients. You know, it's just like, that would be like one thing that somebody could do and being more hydrated is re- is very, very good for the body. So it's like the, the main thing here is, is our diet, the food that we eat. Um, right. Yeah. Well, not everybody, not everyone has, you know, when you're looking at food, um, if somebody's not for me, I let's say we work together mm-hmm. and, you know, it's just like in a short period of time, if I don't see some changes that we would want to see like in 30 days or 45 days, mm-hmm. then I would say, you know, at this point in time, because we already did our first test that we did, we did the questionnaire that I have the three, you know, the two question, the big questionnaires that I have, they give me all the information I have to have and where to focus. If we don't see the change that we're looking for in there from doing food, then what we want to do is we want to do more a test so that we can see if you have any food sensitivities. As I know of a woman for 10 years went to Western medicine who um, kept on having blood in her stools, then it would go away and then it would come back and go away, come back. They treated it alternatively. Then they treated it with medicine. Then they had to go back to medicine. And the Western medicine doctor finally said, I don't have anything else that I can offer you. The only thing left to do is to take out your, you know, intestinal tract. You talked about that also, right? From your father, right? Yes. Okay. So when they get to that point, they go, so what can we do? You know? And so, they went, she said, well, does that mean I'm not going to be able to play with my kids anymore? He goes, well, you might want to control what activities you do. She goes, well, can I swim? No. I had this woman particularly had six kids. Mm-hmm. So for her having, you know, a colonoscopy was not the thing to have happen. So she went and researched out, found a colleague of mine and that colleague was smart enough to do this particular test. And he found out that one of her big foods that created the bleeding was avocados. And we all think that avocados are such great health food, right? Yeah. And a lot of people have reactions to food. It isn't right away. We think we're supposed to have an allergic reaction. If we have sensitivity to a food, it can happen two, 10 days later. You know, you don't have that preliminary first reaction to it, but you can have things that go on that trickle into like three or four days, five days, six days, 10 days later. And it's unlikely at 10 days, but then you have to go like, well, what food did I eat? That's why I always tell people, keep a diet diary, 
just say what, what you ate and like, we'll take a look at like how those things go together. How can we make this meal? Give me a meal that you normally eat. And I will tell you exactly how you can improve that so that you can still eat the foods that you love, you know, but you're doing it in a better, like a, an easier, simpler, better way. So you have better results from that. So sometimes it's changing the quantity. Sometimes it's eliminating things from your diet like she did. And when she did her intestinal tract came back to normal within one year. Wow. Wow. So that's, any, that's, that's huge. <laughs> yeah. And especially for a lot of the women too, sometimes it's like, you know, like me using me as an example, it's, it's hard. And, you know, it could be, like we said, it, it could be mental. Like I know my sweets is more social when I'm out, I'm out and about out with friends. It's we're having fun and I'm always craving for something sweet. Um, Mm -hmm. any, any tips for women out there who may be going through what we believe is hormonal changes where all these symptoms we're getting, feeling ugly, feeling bloated, hair loss, and, you know. It's all from your gut. (laughs) Yeah. I have to tell, it's just like, you're going to go, you're, you know, it's a question (laughs) that we kind of already looked at in a way, but not in a direct way. It's just like, you got to fix your gut to change your life. So, you know, what to do is you just get your friends signed on to do that, you know, and just say like, when you go out, they're going like, oh, but if we can just, we can have one ice cream and we can get six spoons. There's always that one person that eats almost the whole thing. And then you have to, to and then you have to get the other one, you know, and then you go, oh, well, we'll try this like instead. So, you know, it's like when someone brings bread to the table, if you feel like that's a weakness of yours, just ask them to take the bread away. You know, and like when you go grocery shopping, shop on the outside aisles. You know, nothing drives me crazier than going into a large grocery store and in a new one and thinking like, oh, I'm going to get out of here in 30 minutes. Fat chance. <laughs> it's not going <laughs> to happen. Yeah. You know, but, you know, you ask, you know, it's just like, you know, everybody and you just did something I always find so interesting um, is that, you know, if people ask a, a, ask a question, you talk about it and ask the question and they go like, well, tell me, what can we do? It's just like, you know, you've got to be willing to answer this question, are you willing to do what it takes to be healthy? And the second question is, how has your health been in the last two years? And so if you have some positive responses to that, like if someone says to me, they're not willing to do it to be healthy, then my conversation's over with them. Yeah. You know, but if you're willing to do what it takes to be healthy and you want to do it so that it's fun. I mean, I have rules when I work with people. My world is like, you know, let's say we decide on a particular style of diet. So when we do that diet, what we decide upon, you know, it's the, my rule is like, let's say you screw up first off, be honest about it. But secondly, all you got to do is fix it with your next meal and just don't do it on a regular basis. If you want to get the results that you say that you want to get, and you don't want to have those signs and symptoms that are plaguing you from enjoying your day, in your life, and you don't want to have those mood swings that go from left to right, you know, um, you know, and have a reverse reality check, like every 20 minutes, then you've got to take, you know, you have to do what it takes to get back in control, so that you're in control of your health, and not, you know, some, you know, not you're not giving the control up to your diet or, you know, or aid an emotional pressure. And if something like that happens, you can always ask yourself the question. Now is I want sugar because it's physical, emotional, spiritual, or social. And if it's social, you know, guy, well, I go, I equate this kind of social activity with X, Y, and Z. And so you kind of like, Oh, I remember when I was five years old, my mother used to give me cupcakes to keep me quiet. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and then you have that reality. You're going like, hmm. So when I eat sugar, I get tired and I go to sleep. Or I don't have sustainable energy all day long because of the style of foods that I eat. You know, a lot of people don't have the energy to get through their even their longest day. Yeah. You know, and they don't want to, you know, like, and they say like, well, let's identify and manage what stresses you out. So it becomes a thing of the past. How do you do that? 
you know, and you've got to be willing to really take a really, you know, intricate look at like how you function and what your triggers are and what they aren't, you know, and then you have to like, you know, the big question is, are you ready for a, you know, a system or how to manage your time and manage your distractions so that you have better productivity, you have more profitability and you have better self-care because when you take care of yourself, I have a, a, I love this quote. It's like when you take care of yourself, you know, you heal yourself, you heal those behind you, in front of you and around you. And what's around you is your community. And that community, I would like to see heal other communities. And that's the kind of pandemic I'd like to see happen. It's certainly true. Dr. Pat, amazing information. I mean, you hit some trigger points for me that I'm going to put some deadlines in place this month, uh, today, actually, because, you know, while I was thinking about something about food and how, wait a minute, I think I feel, let me try to modify something, my food too, to make my health better. Uh, just to give you a quick history. When I used to, I used to be in bodybuilding shows years ago mm-hmm. and hire a coach. First thing he says, what you need to do is every single meal, you eat 10 ounces of chicken and you do two cups of, of so pretty much I was eating seven, say seven times a day. Five times a day was 10 ounces of protein and a cup and a half white rice. Uh, the other two meals, the first meal was a cup of oatmeal, was a cup of egg whites, two whole eggs. After that, I would have two slices of toast with almond butter. Within a month, my stomach was swelled up so bad because I wasn't processing that much protein at once. So it now makes sense. Our food is so crucial to our overall health and well-being, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, because if you're not eating the right food groups, you're always tired. Then you end up supplementing the tiredness with coffee. Then here comes other issues. So we're always trying to supplement something. So I think you have a lot of information. So tell our audiences out there, how will they find you? How will they connect with you if they want to sign up for one of your programs? Well, how they connect with me is, um, and I'm sure you're going to have this and also on your post, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So my website is healthteamnetwork.com. And um, I'm on, if there are uh, my social medias that I'm on primarily are LinkedIn. Um, I am on Facebook um, as whatever the facebook.com and then ask Dr. Pat. Um, and then on Instagram, it's the same ask Dr. Pat and the same kind of like, you know, the instagram.com forward slash ask, ask Dr. Pat. Um, if somebody would like to get my book, it's on Amazon. It's, I recommend the hard copy book and I recommend looking at this book January 1st, because if everyone wants to get their health in alignment and usually by February 14th, because Valentine's day comes around, everyone's eating chocolate. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> so, so, so if you, if you want to like really know where to start your health journey, you know, so, and you do it right. And you really want to make big changes in 2021 so that you're in charge of your health and your future, then get the hard copy book. Cause it's always on your shelf. And I would recommend you to do it from the book. There's an opportunity to have a conversation with me about what your results look like. And I would make recommendations from that, what your next steps would be or should be. And then you, we can decide whether or not we'd be a fit to work together or not. And because each one of my um, programs I have with people is very, um, you know, it, it's it's very um, com- like customized to the person and what's going on with them. Um, and because no two people are alike. So I, neither are my programs. So, but mm-hmm. I have a basic program for somebody to work with me. And it just depends upon what's going on. Then I make my recommendation, whether it's like um, three months, six months, a year, um, because it takes that long. There's so much information. I mean, we cover so much information tonight. There's no way that this, you know, that you can do this and get all the information that you need really in three months, you know, but in order to make some changes, whether or not if you want to lose weight, whether or not you want, you have some mental health issues and you want to eat better, you know, cause you want to have better results. Um, then, you know, get the book. It's a, it's a really great way to, um, you know, to monitor where your health snapshot is at any time. You can pick it up four or five months later after you get it and repeat it again and see where you're at. 
You know, if you're working directly with me, we would do it a lot sooner than that. So um, those are some particular ways that you can get a hold of me. Is that clear? That makes perfect sense. Actually, I'm thinking about getting your book because there's some tips in there I need for my health. And uh, I might reach out to you personally offline and, and discuss how can I make my health better myself naturally um, and, and talk about what's going on. I mean, right. being in, in, in the fitness world for so many years, it's not only just looking good, but you also go to extremes itself to maintain looking a certain way forever. And those extremes can be harmful as you age. So I want to kind of reverse the process and see what I can do about my health now because I'm out of fitness business. I just want to work out because I enjoy it and not to worry about looking a certain way all the time. So well, I we definitely should, go ahead. We should do that. We should do that. You should, I, I, you know, just, you should do it immediately. <laughs> yeah, I, I certainly agree. Yeah. I got a lot of things I, I'm processing right now and everything we said today. And that's why I'm taking now it's very, I can live, a, I should be living a better life overall without relying on just coffee or, you know, just doing right. The stress, we alleviate the stress, alleviate uh, the excess coffee and alleviate overall better life, you know, because mm-hmm. just to give you one quick example, I spend most of my time eating four or five times a day, eating chicken and rice. I'm saying, wait a minute, is that really healthy for me long term? No. Um, and, and I'm saying, <laughs> well, I'm not getting a variety in my diet. So, okay, how mm-hmm. can I modify that and make it better for myself? Because again, for so many years, I've been in the fitness world trying to look and eat a certain way. And this has been the easiest and most efficient way, but I don't think not, I don't think, I know it's not long-term healthy for me. So I definitely get the book. I'll reach out to you personally and we'll, we'll have a, a great conversation. So for sure, you know, and your cohort there too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I, and, you know, I'm being quiet, I'm, but I was thinking I'm going to have to email her just like what I told her earlier. <laughs> well, you know, if you, I also do group coaching calls too. So that's something that, you know, like if for your, you and your friends, if you're say like, you know, we get that together and also, you know, take note, I, it, my stronger than medicine program starts the first Sunday in January And, um, you know, so if you're looking to have have more energy, you're ready to identify and manage stress, you know, and you want a system so that you have sustainable energy and and self-care for yourself, this is the course for that'd be really good um, jump into. For sure. That would be great. Yes. Yep. Dr. Pat, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. (laughs) You're amazing. You're awesome. And you give us a lot of information. And we want to live a better, health, better, healthy life today, not tomorrow. Right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I for will life. say that. For life, actually. For life. For the rest for, of our life. life. I mean, yeah. you know, there's, you know, it's just, it's paying attention. A lot, unfortunately, a lot of people don't always pay attention until they're in crisis. Yeah. You know, that's a, that is, that's an issue. And there's so many things that. We could have talked about too to add on to that. We would be here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we would love to have you back um, to talk. You know, share more other stuff that maybe we couldn't share today on another. Okay, day. awesome. That'd be great. I love being here. You guys, this is the this is a a fun podcast, and it's a great venue to be able to you know to plant the seeds to help masses of people live better, live healthier, and live longer. Yes. Thank I you. Totally agree. Thank you for sharing everything and all the information you shared with us today and to our listeners. And we um, enjoyed having you with us today and looking forward to our next podcast with you. Yeah, let's follow up. Yes, <laughs> yes, sure. we'll do. We'll do. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. You too.